<laughs> recording. Tell me a little bit about Jonathan Harker, where he fits in into the story of Dracula and the relationships with the other characters. Certainly. Uh, I think, well, to start with, Jonathan, like, unlike, I guess, like the, the strong characters of, of Dracula and Van Helsing, uh, he's, he's a bit adrift in life and as everything kind of happens to him and, and he deciphers that he's not really playing games or, or really pulling any strings to, to make this, the story or, or the situation any other, anything other than it, that it is. He's pretty much just a, uh, a victim of the, of the whole thing. Um, I think he, he does have a, a, a maturity about him um, as the, the horrific situations that I'm just remembering when, when Dracula licks his face and remembering the, um, the smell of Dracula slash Don's breath on my face um, being you know, very shocking and I imagine that that would have been very shocking for him. Um, pretty much everything that happens to him is just, it's like, it's like breaking through glass windows of, uh, of realisation as to, as to how messed up the world is and him just having to almost put it all in its little boxes and, and, and to get through the whole experience and do it in a dignified manner. Um, I mean, if I was to experience my, those things myself, I probably would not be so dignified and, and would have been a lot more enraged and, um, and revengeful than, than Jonathan. But he seemed to, he, he just seems to kind of wear it and then go along with the whole thing. He hates Van Helsing. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't express it uh, that much, but like the, the things that the way that um, Van Helsing really he, he, he changes the course of, um, of things so dramatically when he steps into the picture uh, he, he really it's like he messes with people's minds just to make a funny story for himself and make him the victor um, of the story and, and John, John is aware of that Although he's, I, he's still kind of an observer, observer with a V, not a V. Um, and so I, I think, I mean, if you were to carry on the story of uh, Dracula after Dracula finished, I think you'd, you'd end up finding that, that John would become a very different character, as would, I guess would Mina as well. They'd... Um, I think they become very... Where's Dawn? I don't know. Where's Dawn? I don't see I don't know. He's not over here. <laughs> they kind of ruined... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> here at Dracula, we like to <laughs> support local Kentucky business. Dawn, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. um, Welcome to my interview. <laughs> Oh. Could you okay. take a head, too, please? Yeah. <laughs> so, Jonathan's been through his horrors with Dracula. Yeah. Uh, and then he sees Mina, who he loves, entering the same world. Mm. H how's, how's that feel? How's he react to that? I think, I mean, from his experience in the castle, he, he kind of sees that almost whatever he does, whatever natural reaction that he would have to the situation, whatever rage that he felt, of, you know, it would be all for naught. Um, that there is a, a s much stronger, intelligent character uh, that's that's creating this story, and 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 Jonathan purely just has to hang on. And and survive. Um, I guess the what um, Van Helsing 
does to uh, what he, I guess, what he much wants everyone else to think is to fix the situation. Uh, it even it confuses him or uh, or dulls his his sense of reaction even more because he just does not understand what, how that could be the answer. How just surrendering so completely, uh, giving up. Um, Giving up hope almost that um, that that one or two you know characters that are involved could could overcome this um, this menace or this monster. Uh, it's like a it's like he enters a he enters this uh, a story like a like a nursery rhyme in a way, and the more ridiculous it becomes, it's like he's just got to surrender to it. Um, but it would be playing terrible tunes inside his head. And frankly, I think at the end of it, if, if, if John was to, to let his, his demons um, come to light, I think he probably he would have run Dracula and Van Helsing through, claimed his girl, put her over his shoulder, and said, fuck you all, and gone off into the desert. Yeah. So it's the last serious question. Is it hard for, for Jonathan to maintain compassion for Lena while she's blowing fog at him during his interview? <laughs> I think it's, I mean, this is the fog of love. This is the, um, it's, it's, it's the substance of, of pure joy that's being shot in my general direction. It's, uh, it's like a warming caress. And I think that's, that's what's being said. To, to Jonathan, I think whispering in the dark, and and uh, with all threats of violence against him, he just merely just embraces the the general hug of fog around him. <laughs> and you've done very well, regardless of all that hugging. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>